<laughs> no Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We are here today with Kamaya. Yes, yes. Wait, so how do you know AD? Some rapper shit, you know how it is. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. These rappers, they all got to know each other. West yeah. Coast rappers, they got to. Hell yeah, so small out here. He's supposed to be here right as we're getting done. I told him, I'm like, pull up early so you can see her. Cause That's I know my nigga. You guys are friends or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, dude, you know, what was my experience in getting ready for this interview was that I just, I watched that Vlad interview. Mm -hmm. That was a really, really, really good interview. Yeah, Vlad, you know, he get like a bad rep, but to me personally, I didn't feel like I was getting crucified for real. No, like, I don't, I think he gets a bad rap for some stuff that isn't really His real. Fault? Yeah. Niggas be telling on himself, talking too much. I feel like it's like our prerogative if we want to answer the question or not, right? Right. People will answer the question and go beyond the question mm -hmm. to make their self look as if they're more solidified and gangsta than they should be on an interview because if that's really your life, you shouldn't want them people to know all that right. information. Right. Me and AD were having that conversation. Mm -hmm. I was like, bro, if you went on Vlad and you confessed to some shit that got you in trouble, I would be looking at you like, you're a dumb motherfucker. Why'd you do that? I wouldn't I be looking at Vlad like you... like. There's only so many questions he could ask. He's right. not going to ask, like, did you kill someone? Right. But if he says, what was your upbringing like? And you just mentioned that you killed kill someone. Somebody, and right. I mean, you know. He's not the feds. But, you know, yeah. these kids are different on the Internet, especially in the comments. Because it's like the people who are actually commenting, they're not even a part of that type of culture or lifestyle for you to even be worried about that. But it's on you when you take that stance and that narrative mm. on an interview. Because now you're putting people in your business. Because if the laws wasn't paying attention to you, now they are. They own you. Right. Like, one of the things I saw him get all that shit for was the Casanova interview because I guess it was mentioned in his uh, federal thing or whatever. Yeah. But if you actually look at the shit that Casanova talked about in there, the only things that he talked about that were bad at all was like he talked about robbing a liquor store, but that's literally why he already went to jail. Yeah. So I'm like, that's not anything. That's and my like, nigga, man. Free cast. Yeah, free cast. And all. That's peoples. a terrible situation. Good you know peoples. him too? Yeah, it's my good peoples. You're mega tapped in. I forget. You know what? I just don't be like all in the mix, but like I've been here for like four or five years. So it's not like I don't. anybody who you should know, damn near I already met him. Right. Yeah. yeah I noticed you have a, a deep Rolodex of people you can call to get on songs and shit like that. So that's <laughs> interesting though that they just like have, you've just made a, like, because you say you're not in the mix. But you seem like you have a lot of really good connections. Because I be in the shit. house, but it's like when I'm outside, the people that I'm supposed to know, you got to think about it. When you move a certain type of way and you come from a certain type of lifestyle, we all going to be in alignment. But it's not like I'm about to just be bragging like, oh, I met such and such. Mm -hmm. Like, I done met some of the biggest stars in the world that people will fall out for, and I ain't never took a picture. Really? Because I feel like that memory is more important to me or the game you got me gave me. I can live with that forever. This picture don't really mean shit. That shit means something to everybody else on Instagram. But I don't give a fuck about Instagram. And you on a personal level, if you're meeting someone and kicking it with somebody on some real shit, mm -hmm. and then they just decide they want to take a picture, like on one hand, you you realize like it makes sense. This is how people are these days. You yeah. know, you take a picture with somebody that you like or respect or whatever, but doesn't that kind of shift it to feeling like a little bit less? Mixy. Like, you're not on the same playing field in a way when one person has a little bit of, like, a, a fan thing going for the other person. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it depends on, like, how it comes about. If it's organic. Mm, definitely, yeah. I'm not going to be tripping. But if it's, like, hey, take the picture as soon as we, like, what's up with it? Mm. I'm going to be like, nigga, you on some extra shit. Like, mm. I'm trying to have a conversation. We conversing, and the first thing you do, like, take this picture real quick. Yeah. And then your photographer right there, and it's just a click. Like, this is what you came here for, to take pictures with everybody. And sometimes I think that the photo thing is, like, a modern clout type thing. Absolutely. But, but, then, but then when you go hang out with your parents or some shit or, like, any, like, normal people, you realize, like, everybody is taking pictures of each other, like, on the iPhone and stuff now. <laughs> or, like, if I go to eat with my girl's parents or and they're, they're asking the waitress to, like, take a picture of us and shit. <laughs> and I remember, like, oh, this is just kind of how people are these days, yeah, I guess. Yeah, definitely. That iPhone shit is tricky. Yeah, it is. It's a weird, weird world we live in. <laughs> How online were you? Like, when did you first get on the computer and start to, like, take in the world around you from that perspective? When I was, like, fucking four or five. Remember back in the days in elementary, they had that little game where you delivered the pieces? Oh, yes. But what was the game called? <laughs> Fuck. I, I, I don't remember that shit, but I used to play that shit all the time. I, I swear to God, I used to be like, I can't wait to go to fucking Latch Key to play this piece of shit. Wow. I hated that solitaire shit. I never liked it. You but never I never got fucked, into solitaire. I hated that shit. But that little piece of nigga with the bike, that was my shit. Wow. I was a minesweeper god. <laughs> Did you I, ever play that? I never knew how to play that shit either. I hear that from people so much, and I was like that for like 10 years, and then finally one day I Googled how to play it and got so obsessed with it for like a year that I was practically like fucking failing out of my college classes and stuff because <laughs> I was playing it so much, which is really kind of pathetic. Yeah, nah, that shit was hard, but that piece of shit, I got jiggy with that. And mm. then I remember we used to get the AOL disc when you get the free online shit. Oh, yeah. I used to go to like 
littlebowwow.com and shit. You know, we used to have a fan club and you could just go in there and chat with other people. I used to do shit like that. Wow, that's so informative yeah. of like who you are as a person that you were that interested in like musicians like Hell subcultures yeah. like if I was a and fan, shit. I'm going to TLC fanmail.com and shit like that mm. because that's what it was made for, I guess. Really? You know what I'm saying? Especially when you was a kid. Like that was our shit. I remember the whole website for So So Deaf with the Afro and black and white, all the shit. I used to really be on there. Damn, that's hard. Using my free disc. That's sick. <laughs> that I, I was going through people's mail trying to steal theirs so I could get back online. Yes, definitely. And remember like, they had the dial up shit? What was it called? Net net what was it uh some shit? Oh God, you're hurt. Net Zero was one of them. The little keyboarder had came with his own little shit. My grandpa had that shit. I used to be using all his shit. Right. Okay. So, but like <laughs> early part of your life, what music were you listening to, and like what had the biggest effect on you and stuff? Because that's one of the main things I keep coming back to as I listen to your music is yeah. that sonically you just seem you're in a Tap totally in. different direction. <laughs> I want to know what the fucking influences are and what you I consider grew up important. I my grandparents, so it's like a lot of that influence comes from the vibrations that was around me. Mm. Obviously, it's oldies because they're older, mm. and then he got a little bit of hip hop because my granny is. A little ratchet so you feel me she'll have a tupac cd or whoever is around that's popping mm -hmm. i remember big pun that was our favorite cd you could catch me in the chevy van 150 she playing it every day like really? my granny is so it's like i was tapped into music very very early on yeah very early on that's interesting i've been thinking about that with my kid too like should i just be playing music that i like around them to help educate them or should i be playing them like sesame street music and shit i feel like to me personally it's it's interesting where we're going as we evolve musically because it's like Technically, this shit is gonna be the oldies. Mm. So it's like, do you really want your kids listening to these hoes ain't loyal? <laughs> and 20 years at a fucking barbecue. So it's that, that's the part that gets tricky because it's like, damn, this is gonna be the oldies to them. Yeah. How we felt about like the other shit. So it's like, mm, I don't know about that one. No, yeah. And I wonder, like, <laughs> what am I doing to my kid if I'm playing, like, we, we were playing like the Frank Sinatra christmas album yeah. and i'm thinking like that shit was already old to me when i was a child yeah. think about how old that shit is going to seem to, to her kid, at some yeah. point but i feel like this is your window to educate them like my kid when she's seven or eight might not have like the attention span to appreciate like some old tribe called quest record that i'm going to be I trying like to tell her them. why it's dope yeah you got to get them early yeah. because was, from like fucking four to like 10 you're the most impressionable mm. so if you want them to have a certain musical taste you've got to influence it very early on and then it gives them this well-roundedness when it comes to music like me personally i'm still like into pop music and shit right because mm. you know why we all grew up on disney channel right so when you're looking at Disney channel what the fuck is on there like in sync and shit you yeah. feel me was it mandy moore and shit like that so you grew up and you listen to that i never lost that essence that's why my music's very melodic right because i grew up watching disney movies and seeing fucking what's that shit high school musical and shit mm. even though we're urban you know we come from like the straight hood nigga i still fucked with britney spears christina all in because this is what was on disney that's super dope to hear honestly just like that that pop influence like it's not like you were gonna be able to escape that just because you were yeah. coming up in a certain yeah. environment i feel like people try to now they try to like make their kids super thuggish ruggish listen to da 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 but i feel like that's what made us have the duality is because we would watch nickelodeon which was obviously black as fuck in the 90s all the theme songs was real hip-hop songs you got tlc right you got 702 doing cousin skeeter it was real urban back then and that's then when, when people was the opposite. when people are mad at me like why is a white guy doing fucking hip-hop content i'm just like bro i was indoctrinated by all that exactly and, like, all this other <laughs> shit like that I, i'm sorry that this was just what was being shown to me yeah no that shit was dope man but the thing is is that i feel like if you get your kids listening to like migos early on that that shit is like fucking fentanyl like it's just they're not mm -hmm. going to be able to get used to the slow pace of the shit that mm -hmm. we grew up on like it would be weird to show a kid like the chronic and i mean obviously i'm not i'm gonna skip the but skits. that's still good music right because right. if you think about anything from like 89 to probably like 98 it had a lot of samples which is the undertone of good music mm. so it felt good to you because the familiarness of the fucking sample definitely so that i feel like all that music is actually great fucking music for kids to listen to and you, you notice labels do that is that when they're really trying to make a song find a song to really pop off they go back to that still so much of like let's use an old classic sample that everybody recognizes uh -huh. and that way it'll make your sound it's just feel something a little in your more DNA, familiar like, it's very enchanting it's like this shit i don't know what it is but it just feel good like mm. you don't even gotta really know what it is it just feel good to you Definitely, yeah. There's like anything familiar musically. Mm -hmm. Like, do you, okay, and that, that's an interesting question that somebody was just talking to me about. They're like, "What's on your shower playlist?" And I'm like, "What the fuck you mean?" Like, and they're like, "Oh, like your shower playlist is the music that you love so much that you're willing to listen to it on a super consistent basis." Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, "Man, my playlist changes so much that I don't think I could even like if I had ten songs that I really genuinely love right now that I just listed off two weeks from now." 
I'm just not going to be able to listen to that. Like, it's not like I can never come back to it, but yeah. it's not going to have that same resonance to me that at yeah. the moment. Like, I hear a song four or five times, it kind of starts to become like a song that I'm just not as interested in, that's at least for now. But that's because our attention span has grew so short because of hip hop's ability to fucking create so rapidly now. Mm-hmm. Back in the days, you had to sit with a fucking hit record for like fucking six to fucking 12 months. Nowadays, a hit record's time span is damn near three months, and after that, somebody else has a hit, you kind of over it. Mm-hmm. So it's like when an artist is creating fucking 50 plus songs a year, how can you divulge in one record and just sit on it? Even 50 might be a light for a lot of them, too. Yeah. Like 50 might be what you get to see, but realistically, <laughs> they might have made many, many hundreds. Yeah. Which is kind of scary. Yeah, that's that's the climate we live in now. I get kind of freaked out just re- like when I realized once I first started like really being in the music business and I realized that a lot of my peers on a Thursday night or whenever it used to come out, like that that's their life is like they all the new albums, they have to consume them right then. Mm-hmm. They got to listen to it right away, mm-hmm. get super knowledgeable about it. I'm like, I've never had that experience my whole life. I was <laughs> never like lining up to like there were definitely albums that I made sure I got the first day yeah. or two they dropped, but I was never like having to listen to it the first night because it's like i've i have plenty of time not only that you want to be in the right space because you can listen to an album in one setting and you not fuck with it but then you could be somewhere completely different and it hits you in a different tone and you're like this should actually slap mm. so you want to give it time you feel me to actually be seasoned to where you feel it in the right aspect exactly like i don't want to listen to anything that i think i'm gonna like when i'm in a bad mood exactly at all and then you don't want to listen to the sultry sad shit when you're in a great mood because it's like i don't want to hear that shit right now so it's like you got to find that fine balance when to play a certain album. But do you have a sad playlist? I used to do shit like that when I was younger. Like, you know, being in love, bad relationships, you want to listen to all the sad shit because your heart broke. But I'm like, really, you're pulling out an emotion and making it darker than it should be. Play mm. some happy shit when you sad. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I started kind of doing as I get older. Like, if I'm not in a good mood, I know if I turn on certain records, it'll lighten my mood. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to be sitting in a dark place. Mm. That's kind of awkward, right? Right. I feel mm. like we promote this 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 darkness and this sadness and to keep perpetuating it. But I don't want to feel that energy when it's another energy, which makes me feel good. I'd rather right. do that. Like, I could be sad, but I'm not going to want to put on music to make me more sad. <laughs> I used to do shit like that. I promise you. I promise you. I'd be like, why am I sitting here crying listening to this sad shit? Like, right. And I had to stop doing that. Like, I'm going to stop this shit. This is some sucker shit. I have so many of my friends that are super into R&B and shit that, yeah. like, it kind of makes me feel like there's something wrong with my brain that I just don't really, like, have a, a moment in my day or my week where I want to listen to some super slow, sexy music talking about eating pussy and all this shit. It just don't really... <laughs> like, I've been listening to, like, mostly rap music or at least, like, aggressive music for mm-hmm. most of my life. And I just never really got into that groove of, like, you know, wanting to listen to that kind of stuff. I love R&B. I believe you. Yeah, I like that side. I had. I told you I like it. I'm very multifaceted when it comes to music. I don't give a fuck. I can if tell, that yeah. shit country, if it's rock, if it's acid, whatever fuck it is. I don't, if that shit slap, I'm going to listen to it. I don't give a fuck. This shit mm. slap. Interesting. Did you, uh, as, do you remember as a kid, like, making any sort of effort to educate yourself about the music that came before you? Was that, like, anything you were even concerned about? Because sometimes I think about that with kids. Like, do kids even bother to ever, like, go back and find the stuff that I was listening to as a I kid? I still do that. I study music because I feel like it's just... I just love everything about music. Like, literally three weeks ago, me and my brother was up to, like, five in the morning just watching old Soul Train episodes. Because mm. it's just fucking crazy. Like, thinking about how that evolved into the culture and what it created for black people. It's just, like, shit like that. I think that's, like, very important. Like, I wasn't familiar about James Brown or who he was. I watched the damn movie they made about him. Then I went back and watched his performances mm. to understand, like, why was he so impactful to those people at that time. Right. I'm like, this nigga on stage getting fucking jiggy. Like, right. have you ever wouldn't actually watch Watch this motherfucker. No, totally. Putting like, up the leg, and he, uh, and he just that nigga be cutting the fuck up. So, and at that time, that was crazy. And I, I do that for like multiple genres because I'll go back and watch like I've gone and watched like old Marvin Gaye and Aretha mm-hmm. Franklin because you heard those songs five million times, mm-hmm. but without the visual. Whereas Even now, Rhapsody, that movie made me go back and listen to them because mm-hmm. I I wasn't well versed on them, and I went back. I'm like, oh, who is Freddie Mercury? Who are these people? And then I went back to them. I'm like, oh, y'all made all this shit. Mm. I never knew y'all made this shit. And right. that's dope to me. To Songs that. that you heard a hundred times, a in million your life, fucking right. times. Never know who the fuck they're like. We were Rocky. We all know that record mm-hmm. because of growing up watching baseball, etc. You but know you the didn't record. Didn't know it was this fool with a mustache yeah. and some aviator glasses and yeah. shit. Yeah. Name Queen. <laughs> Which he was. Yeah. Like he was openly the queen. So it's like right. I fucked with that. But like. There's Marvin Gaye songs or Temptation songs, whatever, that I heard five billion times in my life, but I never seen the like a visual. Like, I never watched Marvin Gaye perform one of these songs, <laughs> even though I heard it a million times in my life, which is very different because 
a lot of people, their biggest memory of Kamaya is going to be a Kamaya music video. Yeah, like that. More people are going to, that's going to stand out to them than a single project or whatever, which is kind of crazy. Like in the modern age, people are so much more likely to have your music be directly tied to your image and your art that you're putting out there. I think yourself. the radio is going to die very soon. Yeah. I it's, feel like it's too many other ways to consume music, which is taken from that aspect of what you're saying. Like, they see the visuals first because nobody's actually in the car hearing the record first. Mm -hmm. But now with the radio, they've basically accepted that they're just appealing to the super tiny sliver of the market, which is like the people who are driving to and from work and aren't savvy enough to like realize that if you want to listen to rap music, you'd probably be better off going on Spotify and listen yeah. to a playlist. Yeah, definitely middle America for sure. Yeah. Like those country people who just don't even really have fucking car radios yet and shit like that. Like that's who probably still listens to the radio. That's like the same reason why like Eminem will always like crush the album sales of the year chart or whatever is mm -hmm. because he has the kind of fan base that will actually walk into the Walmart and buy your album and that counts for way more than everybody else who streams it a few times. I feel like it's only two urban acts that can get that who actually have captivated that audience, which is Tiger and Travis. Tiger it's very, very hard to get middle of America. And probably Uzi, because he has the younger version of that audience. Interesting. Because it's like middle America is very hard to get that audience. It especially is. being urban. But when you get them motherfuckers, you ain't gonna never not ever be able to sell an album or sell out a fucking show. Right. That's just period. Interesting. Yeah. It's weird to see that like Travis Scott has somehow just become like the coolest young dude ever that all these kids just sort of gravitate I towards i fucking get it I, really? at first I, I didn't quite understand him until i went to the studio with him and i recorded with him and i remember he was like do the hook do the hook and i couldn't catch him I'm like nigga i can't do this shit you feel me i'm like nigga, i don't know how to do this shit I'm, I'm not feeling it he went and he did it and i'm watching him i'm like where the fuck this nigga gonna go with this shit then when he did it i said nigga now i get you i <laughs> motherfucking get it now i see why people fuck with you you are a fucking genius so really he's very talented extremely wow, fucking talented but this was like crazy early that you worked with him too yeah right? it was like literally the first year in my career what year 2000? 2016 i think uh-huh yeah so how, just, how'd you guys tap in that nigga summoned me really i'm like summoned, literally, <laughs> i love that kamaya gets summoned <laughs> that's what i called it because i was like literally on set of a video and then my manager he like ran upstairs he's like travis scott wants you to come to the studio and mind you like when my brother died in the beginning of my career i'm not really realizing like how big all these moments were you feel me it's like mm. now i look back and be like damn you did all that like so quick and it just didn't feel like it because i was going through the grieving process wow. but he's supposed to show some of me he was like hey pull up and i remember getting there and being at Kanye's studio and they're like, oh, you got to sign this. And the paper had like, what's your mom's address and all type of crazy shit. I'm like, I'm not signing this shit. Really? <laughs> it was like a whole process. But then when I got in there, I swear it was so full of love and there's so much respect. Even if I see Travis's people now without him, we all still got that same type of bond. That's amazing. That. Okay. But when you talk about the grieving process, was, was it like a very specific time period in your life? Because it was I'm like a two, three year span that I feel like I didn't feel shit and even really? realize it. Like literally. And but you had lost people in your life prior to this. It just wasn't it was It's like imagine being with somebody every day of your life or every other day and they just mm. die. But then your life is changing and you're just going up, 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 wow. up, 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 and you gotta deal with all this shit. But then you're dealing with this. So wow. it's like it was just like I don't know, I can't even describe it. When I when I actually finally sat with my emotions and realized what I was going through, I was like, damn, you gotta let that shit out because it's like if you don't let it out, you're gonna keep fucking up. Cause I felt like I was fucking up. I wasn't really all the way there mentally. I was letting people get away with shit. I would have never fucking let it slide if I was in my right mind state. I was just really? was completely gone. So I was like, once I got back down to earth and back to normal, the old me was back and motherfuckers was like, damn. <laughs> they do. They saw it. They was like, fuck this bitch back. She about to be on some shit. Do you think you made decisions that you regret ultimately in regards to like how you treated your career and stuff because you weren't in the right state of mind? I don't regret anything, right? Because I feel like it was supposed to happen. I feel like God, for some reason with me specifically, I went through all the fuck shit you're supposed to go through in the industry, right? You know, I say you're going to lose friends, you're going to lose family members, you're going to have people steal from you, you're going to have friends that just, all type of, I went through every single thing really? before I got to a multi-millionaire status. Like, I didn't went platinum, I didn't went gold, I didn't make millions of dollars, but I didn't get to that level where it's like, I'm all over the media and middle America knows me. I'm on fucking Vanity Fair. I'm on Vogue. So it's like, I feel like he wanted me to experience that. So the next go around, when he does bless me, whatever I'm supposed to be blessed with, I know how to fucking manage it. Secondly, maintain who I am. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I was going through so much. I don't feel like I would have been able to maintain that shit if he would have gave me that. And I feel like it was people around that God didn't want 
to be around when he gave me whatever he wants to give uh. me. And I understand that. So it's like, I take everything as a learning experience. I don't take nothing like personal. It's like, shit, that's life. I had to go through that. Right. No, totally. I mean, yeah, you, you like there are so many things that you have to go through in order to get even past that first part of your come up, you know, mm -hmm. like in terms of just, you know, like we, we all know people who just get who haven't been humbled yet and yeah. you see them on the rise and everything's going great for them and mm -hmm. stuff. And you, you very much can kind of just see that they still have a lot to learn. Like yeah. you still have to get fucked in this business before you're going to understand what it is to actually be a person in this business because a lot of times people they get really into playing the game of, mm -hmm. of just sort of like social climbing and working with mm -hmm. all these different people and stuff and the, the numbers just keep going up and it's hard for them to imagine when the shit starts to go down and when the shit starts to go down it's keeping over. it together is the worst and not losing yourself <laughs> mm -hmm. in that process is that's like one of the best biggest challenges that you're going to end up facing I feel like all the greats the people who actually have longevity careers went through shit very semantic to mine mm. you gotta go through some fucked up shit in the beginning to understand how to maintain when you get the real big blessing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. when you look at your 50 cents your mc hammers your fucking diddies everybody the people who actually stayed at the top they didn't actually win from their first situation mm. it was the bounce back because it's like nigga i gotta make sure i maintain this this time or it ain't gonna ever happen for me so i feel like that's how i kind of look at it it's like the people who actually maintained this shit didn't blow up overnight mm. and i consider myself a very popular underground artist because i ain't never really been mainstream but right. everybody kind of knows me you yes. know what i'm saying it's like i ain't never had no real big hit record but you know who the fuck i am so it's like i'm still underground very much so right i just had a lot of mainstream looks that make people be like when she gonna go but were those looks something that you were going out courting and really trying to no, get? No, it happened to me naturally. Yeah. So it's like, it's not like I was vetting these opportunities. People just saw something from and in me early on right. that they felt like I'm going to be whatever it is I'm destined to be. And when I go back and watch your like super early videos, it's just like, wow. Like as somebody who wasn't completely tapped in, extremely early on there is such a level of charm to that early shit in particular <laughs> just because... You could very much tell, like, when, when we're, we're sitting here talking right now, it's like, I can tell that you've been through a lot in the game and, and really learned your way around it and stuff. There was something, like, very, very pure about a lot of your early videos and stuff yeah. where you could tell, like, this is really a girl from the hood that is really, like, just talented and just doing it. And she might not know exactly what she's doing, but she, like, it was just so earnest yeah. and so honest. And it was just... I don't know. I can very much understand why there was such like a rush to support you and shit early on in your career. Mm -hmm. Then that's the thing about me. People think I don't know what I'm doing, but I actually studied the game for so long mm. that I'm extremely calculated. You just don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that, you for that's sure. That's yeah. the part where people be thinking. I'm like, nigga, I'm not one of them people who everything. She, you can ask her right here. She will tell you from the fucking artwork to the videos to me sitting there actually constructing the records. I am very hands on everything I do because the people. I study what's like this. Really? So it's like nothing that I do that's not like from the fucking way I'm wearing my hair. Everything is fucking premeditated because that's what superstars do. Right. Well, that's kind of the irony of you. It's getting no more caught media the, training. What's that shit called? Artist development. It's no more of that. Right. So it's like, in essence, I had to develop myself. I'm still developing myself, but it's like, I get that process. Right. Like right now, I feel like my stage performance can be better. I get that. So before the world opens back up, I want to manifest that and make sure that I make sure that, that that's the best thing I can do. Like, how do I fucking master being a better performer before we fucking open this world back up? Right. My I titties hella big. Maybe I should get a reduction because I can't breathe like everybody else. I can't jump. Like, it's like shit like that I think about because I'm like, that fucking matters. The booze if you make wanna... it hard to breathe. I didn't know that. Because it's like, if you look at my chest, my chest is very busty. A few so, videos I saw of you, I noticed that. Yeah, so I'm yeah. busty. So it's like, if I got five to 10 pounds, that's just me guessing randomly, just hitting me against my chest as I'm running back and forth. How you think that's going to win me? <laughs> but what, whose energy would you aspire to sort of have in terms of your performance? Because a lot of people suck. Like, really amazing rappers, some of the greatest <laughs> rap performers of all time, in terms of like going on stage and performing, not really that impressive. It's like, I want to have a fine line between performing and captivating the crowd like i don't want to always be up here doing renditions because this is hip-hop you know mm. what i'm saying so it, it doesn't have to be all dancing somebody who i look at a lot is tupac because i feel like he didn't actually fucking dance and shit all the time but the way he performed even travis he just gets your a fucking tension mm. travis is one of the most phenomenal performers of this fucking generation right i fucking love watching travis live because it's like this nigga was performing like this when there was only 10 people in the room right that's how much he loved performing 
But once you go on tour and you actually, like, even for me, going out and doing the little DJ thing, go out and, like, run back and forth and get everybody hyped up and stuff, mm -hmm. you start to realize, like, there's a version of that. There's a version of your set that expends, like, all of your energy and completely you just leave everything on the stage. Uh -huh. And you can do that. Or you can go out there and do like a very much more like middle of the road type of performance where maybe <laughs> you'll still have some energy to be able to like, you know, do stuff for the rest of the night. And I mean, that that's kind of the crazy thing when you see somebody who's mega successful. I remember watching Drake perform at Stable Center. That was one of the things I was really taken back by is like this motherfucker is an athlete because he was running back and forth performing the fuck out of those songs all night. And that is really amazing to me yeah. to be. That's like some real mm -hmm. athlete shit. And, like, if you pay attention, the crowd feeds off your energy. Mm -hmm. That's what another thing I learned watching Travis. Like, if you literally sit there and watch, you'll see. When he goes to a certain point, they go to a fucking certain point. And I'm talking about they go to fuck there to the point where people is carrying them the fuck out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just what you put on that stage is what you're going to get from that audience. Now, if you're getting booed, it's because you're probably not giving them something they fucking are feeling. Mm. Very interesting. Does that hurt at all that you haven't been able to perform in so long? A little bit because I feel like we all need those human interactions because it's like during this period of my life specifically, I put out more music than I ever put out being on a label. Notice that, yeah. And it's like I can't feel what the world is feeling because I'm not able to go out and perform and see how y'all reacting to it. Mm. So it does affect me because it's like I like to see that. Like when I first dropped Got It Made, when I got out the deal, I had a show in Oakland and I saw, all right, as soon as I came out, these motherfuckers is moving to this record. Mm. I didn't even think y'all would know the words to this, but now I know y'all fuck with this. Right. Now I can't do that because it's like, damn, That's the whole world though, It's because sometimes you mm. see artists who come out and they start playing big ass venues and stuff and you see how their music kind of changes relatively quickly because they realize that the sort of lo-fi slow shit doesn't necessarily do that well on stage mm -hmm. and that if you really like, if you're chasing that live reaction, then your music is going to go in a specific direction. Uh, I find that to be, it's like perspective mm. because I've been to shows where artists aren't as turned up, but their crowd comes out and they are those type of people. Like if you're making lax music, obviously your crowd's going to be more of a weed smoking crowd. Mm. So the people who make certain type of music, a lot of their fans are like, you know, lax people. You were never a weed smoker? I smoked like, the first time I smoked was with my brother. I was like 12, 11 and I smoked for a little while. And then we started making me paranoid. So I just been off it. Really? I always felt like my ancestors have a higher calling for me because I can't fuck with no drug. Really? No. Wow, and that's after a while, it just, it just like, I started feeling like paranoid. And I'm like, they do that so I don't keep going. Because they like, if you keep going, bitch, you're choosing to be a tweaker at yeah. this point because you're scared. So I feel like they do that to me because it's like, this is not what you're meant to do. Like me, I don't even drink like that. Really? No, when I drink, if you catch me with anything, it's probably an angry orchard at this point in my life. An angry orchard? Bitch beer, that's what I call it. Wow, I've never, bitch never would have expected you to go craft beer. I this. used to drink Hennessy, all that shit, but I'm telling you, I feel like it's like a block in my mind to where I don't even think about it but no. the songs about drinking like on that's your earlier work drinking. that's when you were i was fucked up right after about i was literally drinking fucking fifths i was fucked but and then i realized why i was doing it my yeah. brother died numbing the shit now do you realize that no that's how i gained weight i was small as fuck if you look back but i was drinking and eating every day drinking and eating every day and then i looked up i gained 50 pounds and i like kicked back and thought about it. i assessed the situation i'm like yo you're not an alcoholic, but you're on the cusp, bitch. Cut that shit out. Like right. anything, I'm like a real analyst when it comes to me. If it's something I could fix in myself, I'm going to sit there, write a checklist, check that shit off and fix it. Right. Because I don't want to be in my 30s trying to correct some shit I could have fixed in my 20s. Wow. I have a lot of respect for that. Thank you. That's a really good outlook. Yeah. No, hell yeah. Like, I'm like, and it's so easy to do, but people care too much about what others think about them. You mm. got to worry about what's best for you and your life and what's going to keep you here. Mm. I don't give a fuck if it's from you stopping the gang banging and changing friends to you eating better, whatever it is that's going to keep you on this earth as long as possible. Make those adjustments because a lot of times people early demise be the decisions we make. And it's like, if I can fix something, because at the end of the day, I don't know when God going to call me home. But if I feel like it's something that could prolong that process, mm. my nigga, I'm going to do that. Because it's like, I'm not ready to be out the game yet. I got shit to do. Really? <laughs> like, that's how I, feel. I was talking to my manager yesterday. I'm like, nigga, do y'all ever think? I was talking to him, uh, Justin, sitting over there. I was like, do y'all ever think about, like, dying and shit? they like, yeah. I'm like, nigga, I'd be hella mad if I die right now. I got so much shit I want to do. <laughs> right. And they said the same shit. Because, you know, this year has been rough for a lot of people. We've lost lots of fucking people. Like, mm. my grandmother just passed. So it's just like, 
on top of that, I lost hella friends just randomly dying. Right. Like, one of my friends died in a fucking freak accident, and she was pregnant. Her son was in the car. The car, car like, exploded and went viral. I'm seeing the video and didn't know it was about her until later that day. Oh, my God. Like, it was crazy shit like that that happened this year, so it just made me think about life completely different because it's like, this shit ain't promised for nobody. Wow. No, that shit was crazy. crazy. I'm like, somebody was like, her son died. So I called to make sure... She was, I mean, she was okay because of the son. And when I called to figure that out, they like, no, she died. Her girlfriend died. The dog died. The baby in her stomach died. Everybody died. It was a video going around. You probably seen it. The car exploded. All type what of shit. What the fuck? That's terrible. And I seen this shit. I was like, oh my god, because it was like the other car like completely crushed her car. So it's like I was like sad for. And I tell myself like, you got like three days to be sad. After that, you can't bring them back. That's how I started looking at the mourning process. Right. Right. Celebrate the memories. And don't feel the pain from missing them. Because you're going to always miss them, but they're just not in the flesh. They're still there. But do you ever feel like you end up sort of like racing through the grieving process at this point? Mm-mm. where Because Mm-mm. I just feel like I've seen so many people die through this this line of work even over the past few years. Yeah. That sometimes I feel like my brain just aggressively sort of pushes the feeling of mourning down and like away because it's hard to like be productive and to like fight through the fact that you're sad when you lose somebody. But... Sometimes I feel like that's really unhealthy. Like I have friends who pass that, you know, we, we we mourned them and stuff, but I don't feel like I necessarily did enough sometimes or like it, it, given I how important the they were to me, you know? I celebrate my niggas. Really? Because I feel like it's a homegoing process, right? That's why they say that. That's what a funeral was, a homegoing process. Mm. So celebrate them for what they were on this earth and keep them alive. Like, you know, in my house, you come to my house, I got ancestor tables. Like I worship them because at the end of the day, those are the only people I know for sure that can make something happen for me from the other side. So mm-hmm. I'm going to worship you just like I will worship you in the flesh. Right. So I love the fuck out of them and realize that it's nothing I can do to bring them back. So don't disappoint them by sitting around being depressed because at the end of the day, I feel like that hurts them more than you sitting around fucking getting up and doing something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because this is your bloodline. This is your lineage. If you sit around crying all day, how is that conducive to fucking healing everybody? Right. You're break, You're making it worse for everybody. If, you, if you're if you the one motherfuckers is rooting for, you sitting here drunk, high, crying, right. that ain't going to help the family be blessed. So I'm like, I'm not about to do that. Like, how is like how is you being sad as fuck and unable to get out of bed for a week? Like, how is that really honoring them or making the situation better? Like, I understand that that is how some people handle mm-hmm. it. And there have been people that died in my life where... Mm-hmm. I didn't want to leave the house for a few days or whatever, but I think that is kind of like an American assumption that we that is not necessarily the same in a lot of cultures where they don't necessarily treat death as something where you they need celebrate to be the around. fuck out the dead. Right. In every from Africa to Haiti, you go to motherfucking and what's that shit called? Mexico, mm. Puerto Rico. They celebrate the dead. Right. They got Diaz de la Montes, all that shit. They celebrate the dead. It's only in America where we will get depressed and damn near borderline kill ourselves because someone passed away. Right. And when I started realizing that, I was like, I'm not about to keep doing that shit. Like, you know, when I watch Coco, I feel like that everybody should watch Coco. That's some woke ass shit. Really? It breaks down the whole process of the veal, what happens on fucking Halloween and how to celebrate the dead. Wow. It's like a woke ass cartoon. I gotta watch that. No, Don't watch that shit. Yeah, definitely. No, it's, that's just like, it's a weird thing to think that like, you have to, like when you think about what a funeral is like in America versus like that, the types of cultures Even that Louisiana, you're talking about. When you go to Louisiana, what's it called? The front line, first line? Uh-huh. They fucking have the marching bands. They walk down the street. They dance. And they send them home in style. Like, they're not grieving. Mm. And I feel like that's when I start to realize, like, all right, death should be looked at differently when I actually, like, assess different variations of how people celebrate fucking death. I'm like, we be on some other tricky shit. But then when you look at it, it's like, most people are doing things to celebrate the dead and don't even realize. Like, you ever notice when somebody dies, the first thing we do, we have the candlelight and you got the candles all lit in the bottle. Uh, Most people pour out or leave drinks and candles for their ancestors if you go to the other cultures. Right. But we're doing it instinctively because it's in our lineage, in our DNA, but we don't know why we're doing it. Like, in the hood, I start thinking about that. Like, damn, we be like, pour out some drink for the damn homie. Do you not realize what you're really doing? Yeah. Like, I, when I start actually, like, educating myself on certain things. I'm like, damn, we be doing shit just naturally based on it just being in your genetics. Right. And don't even realize that's the reason you're doing that shit. That's crazy. It's deep. Do you, do you ever have people tell you that you're a little bit of an old soul? Hell, fuck yeah. I was really surprised to realize you were only 10 years younger than me. Yeah. 
I'm young as fuck. People yeah. be thinking I'm old. I always get that. <laughs> Especially because my hair, everything. I'm like, nigga, I'm 27, 28 years old. Y'all think I'm in my 30s, all type of shit. I'm so young. It's just that I grew up with older people. And like I said, I feel like my ancestors touched on me young. Mm. So it just made me have a different type of level of insight. Like you're not used to meeting somebody who's as young as you that seems to like know themselves so well and have that <laughs> sort of confidence and stuff. Like we, we, we assume that like a large percentage of young women are going to be kind of insecure. Naive. And, you yeah. got to always remember, too, I'm from Oakland. So Oakland women are a little bit different. Don't forget, this is our lineage true. just based on the Panthers itself just gives us a different type of form of education really? of your own self. But what was your knowledge of that as a child? My like, uncle was woke as fuck. I used to hate going to his house, but now I respect what he did for me. I'm talking about incense in the morning, kufi on, praying every fucking two, three hours type nigga. Really? Yes, my uncle was different. I couldn't listen to certain shit. Like, I'm talking about he wake up, you only hear Erica Badu. You only can watch Black Panther. You can only watch, like, such shit. Right. So it's like he taught me essences of things that I didn't understand at that age until I became a young lady. Wow. And I'm like, oh, nigga, you was making me gamed up early on. That's why I'm right here with it, because you was on my ass. Because he used to be like, you can't wear this. You can't talk like that. Young lady sit like this. So it just instinctively made me have certain characteristics early on. That's interesting. But you, you got that from him, but that wasn't necessarily the education you were getting from your parents? My parents, let me, I, no disrespect to my parents, I don't feel like Neither one of them taught me anything of what I am today. Really? No, my father's been in and out of my life on drugs, all the shit, my whole life. My mm -hmm. mom, I lived with her to a certain degree, to a certain age. Then I was in foster care. Then my grandmother raised me. Then I got back with her when I was right. like 15, 16. By that age, right, I'm already setting my ways of who I'm going to develop to become. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's why I feel like we bumped heads at a lot until I became successful. Because she kicked me out because it's like, the vision of what she wanted for my life is not what I wanted for my life. And you can't make me be something when you weren't here to mold me to be who right. I am. So it's like, we always had odds on that degree. It's like, I'm not about to be on that type of time. That's a huge thing for me. Is like, But you, I respect my mother. She if, knows that. That's why I said, with all respect before I made that right. statement. If you have a kid and they're different, like I was different as a kid. Like I was, fuck. I was like an <laughs> artist. I was really into painting and drawing mm -hmm. and writing and stuff. But I couldn't, I couldn't fit in in school and stuff. And then like my Same. parents didn't understand that. They don't that. understand that. Right. I tell my cousins now, right, because I'm, I'm very, like I told you earlier, I'm very family oriented. Mm -hmm. So I spend most of my time on FaceTime with like six of my cousins. We on group FaceTime. They all have kids. So sometimes I see certain characteristics in certain kids. I'd be like, hey, put them in gymnastics. Put them in this type of schooling because right. I don't know what side of the brain is left and right and what characteristics it develops but I know one side makes you more artistic mm. and one side makes you more like literal. Right. And I'm like, they need to open schools based upon that. Like take the assessment test and see, is this child a left brain child or a right brain child? Mm. And then put them in rooms that manifest that, you know what I'm saying? Develop that because they don't do that. They just throw you in the classroom and then they be like, ah, uh, you ain't sitting still. You got ADHD. You got this. You got that. Let's and it's put like, them on drugs. yeah, like, no, they just learn differently. Did you, like, do you ever think about what would have been different if you had been, like, exposed to learning instruments at a young age and stuff? And the, the, I'd be fucking with it right now. I'd be yeah. on some her shit, some Alicia Keys <laughs> shit. Cause it's like, it I know. It could only help, like, make your make musical journey better yeah. if you did have that what? knowledge, right? That should be crazy because I can make beats, right? Or start the beat for the producer. Cause a lot of times people don't know, I start beats for my producers, but I can't. All the way through. You don't want to do every last detail. Yeah, so if but I could fuck with it on the keys, I'd be out here doing some shit. Really? But I can't fuck with it like that. Right. I want to teach myself though because I felt like I was just in a group on uh, Clubhouse. I've been on Clubhouse. Oh, so and you're on the Sam. Clubhouse wave. Okay. Yeah, it's not really. I pop in and out because I don't like. What kind of rooms are you in? The I only Oakland go to the room. room the, uh, the intellect rooms. Like I Ooh. click in. I used to be on there, you know, talk to 21, certain people. But then I started realizing, like, I don't like how sexualized is becoming. Everything's about, oh, who you fuck with? Who that? Nah. So I pop in if somebody talking about something that's actually going to educate me. Right. And then I remember in one room that's talking about, like, I'm left-handed, which automatically lets you know, like, you are intellect. If you're working with this hand, they, like, force yourself to write with the right hand, and it's going to unlock the other part of your brain. Uh -huh. So it's like, now I'm going to try to develop that because I'm like, I want to know if there's some truth to that. Because they're like, it makes you, I don't know, it makes you open up something different in you because you're forcing the other side of your body to be unlocked. Right. I'm like, shit, let me figure that shit out then. Shit, and, and sit down. I don't give a fuck if I'm writing the A, B, C, D, whatever. I'm just keep trying to do it. But so the clubhouse rooms that you were in were too thoughty for your taste? I don't like that. Really? Nah, because I'm not on that type of time. I'm more of a like, I respect myself. I respect my temple. If uh -huh. I'm dating somebody, I'm monogamous. I'm not into the flirty, sexualized, extra all that shit that people are, like trying to like perpetuate with women these days i'm mm. like if that's a woman's narrative that's her stance but a lot of times i feel like that is just a form of them wanting attention you know what i'm saying mm. it, to some degree or some facet in your life you're not getting the attention you want but you know if you do this it's gonna get you a certain level of attention i'm not into that right i know who i am i'm very aware so it's like i don't want to be on that type of time 
Yeah, I was having a conversation with somebody about you this morning. I was like, Kamala, more than any other female artist I can really think of, just doesn't seem like she's ever really used her sexuality or like sexualized herself as a way to get ahead. And w was that something that was always obvious to you? In I your have career? all brothers. Mm. I couldn't be a hobie for this. Right. That beat my ass. <laughs> like, it's just me being real. I remember I told my brother when I was like 13, E40 had a song called, uh, Did She Go Sliding Down the Pole? And I used to dance. So I was like, I want to be a stripper. My brother said, Bitch, I go in there and start shooting. Bop, bop, bop. Get that bitch off the stage. From that moment on, I never even played them type of games. I had one boyfriend. Uh -huh. That is what it is. I'm not playing around. When I started dating women, it's one woman, whatever. Never been the type to just juggle and just be a... I don't do that. I don't even want to play with nobody else's feelings. I want that on my conscience. Just because your brother said he would shoot up a strip club. My brothers are very, very, like, important to me. Mm. I never wanted to disappoint them. I always idolized them growing up. So it's like, why would you want to do something that will make them feel some type of way as a man. Uh. I don't even want to put my... And another part was, I didn't want to put my brothers in a compromising position to shorten their lives because something dumb I fucking did. Right. Like, I'm out here fucking with different niggas or a certain type of caliber of niggas, and now you're in harm's way because you're trying to defend me when really I'm in the fucking wrong for even doing something. And he's mad about it, but you just like, I'm your sister, so you trying to, you know? I right. never wanted to do that with my brothers. Like, I'm not doing that. That's interesting. Hell well, no. How do your brothers feel about your success and where you've made it to and shit? My niggas love me. Oh, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> them niggas love me. <laughs> right. But what is it like? Like, you, how much do you talk to them? What are the conversations like? And, like, how, how do they view it? One of my brothers is in the military. You know, he already crazy. He in the military. Oh, so, okay, okay. <laughs> so one's in the military, major pain. That's what we call that nigga. He in the military. <laughs> and the other one, he just lives his life. But we talk. We don't talk all the time. But, you know, we love you. We love each other. Right. You know, that is what it is. When we were uh, talking about you earlier, too, we were saying it's like, you know, it's kind of crazy that Kamaya didn't become like a, a Bay Area slash sack gangster rapper writing diss tracks about motherfuckers and like have that be your bread and butter. Cause <laughs> you know, that's like a sub genre of like Bay hip hop yeah. is like motherfuckers basically banging on each other on tracks, getting millions of views doing that. I'm not that type of person, though. <laughs> I don't care about clout. If you don't pay attention, that won't give me the man. That shit ain't gonna give me no good karma. Mm. I don't believe in that shit. That I think shit. you'd be really good at it, though. I know for a fact because like, people don't understand that I've been writing music since I was eight, nine years old. I can rap my fucking ass off. You ever write a diss track? Yes, but have you ever heard it? No. Right. I'm an artist. I, I feel like I can really rap, but I feel like what's important is making a great song. So I'm a mm. phenomenal songwriter. Really? That rap shit doesn't fucking matter. It's but like who that. Who put audience, you on to the songwriting hustle or like the idea of prizing yourself as that? I taught myself. Really? When I saw Bow Wow rapping, I wanted to do it. So I sat at a table and forced myself. I used to read the dictionary to learn words. That's if you can tell my vocabulary is hella extensive. Oh, that's I read thing. I read the dictionary and learned hella words and just sat there and figured out how to make shit rhyme. Right. At the age of eight, nine years old. So now my game is fucking impeccable. Wow. Like, my literacy, et cetera, is just out of here, out but of this world. Did you go to college or you finished you finish high school? No. No. I dropped out. because I, 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 I felt like I didn't need it. I was already smarter than my teachers. I used to hate that shit. Like, you're trying to teach me about some shit I know more than you about. Even when I went to college. Because, you know, in the Bay or wherever, if you drop out of high school and you don't have a diploma, you have to take an entrance exam to get in college, right, to get the, fin the FAFSA, the financial aid. Right. I took the entrance exam and passed, so I got in college that way because I dropped out of high school. Right, right, okay. I'm All my friends this, was going yeah. to college, so I was like, damn, I want to go. They got in because they got the diplomas. I had to take the entrance exam. Uh -huh. So I got in on that form. I went for a while, and I just realized, like, I love music more, and I'm like, if music didn't work out, I can always go back to school, right? Because I'm an intellect, I'm a scholar. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I'm, my plan B was to be a psychologist. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go figure this out. If it don't work, I'm gonna go back and be a psychologist. The shit fucking works. So it's like, nigga, you know what you're doing. Like, you don't gotta go to school. That's interesting. Yeah, fuck psychologist. That. What you you do? You feel like you would be very good at helping people in that regard? Because mm -hmm, I was in foster care, I always wanted to be like a um, social worker or a psychologist. And people call me all day talking about their fucking problems anyway. So what's the difference? Really? Yeah, you gotta think about it. If you talk to the homies and she complaining about her man or your, your friend. That's a guy, he's complaining about where he's at in life and he wants to better himself. That's the same thing as being a psychologist. You just sitting on the couch getting paid for it. Right. Maybe I don't feel that I'm a good listener because I would be so shocked if one of my <laughs> friends hit me up complaining about their girl, like hit me on FaceTime <laughs> to talk about problems with their girl. It happens once in a while, but I just I, I feel like they seem to understand that about me, that maybe I'm not the best sounding board for this <laughs> topic. I feel like, men, you guys don't express your emotions. The culture doesn't promote men yeah. being emotional. Yeah. And I feel like that's why you guys have the hardest time in life and the most drug addictions, because you're trying to numb some shit that you can't even express. Yeah, there might be some truth to that. There's I, uh, hella truth to that. Men numb the fuck out their emotions. Right. Even Especially men who go through a lot of trauma. 
the first thing they do is start smoking weed and they feel like it's not an addiction. Mm. You're smoking every day talking about I can't function without smoking, but you don't feel like it's an addiction. Right. You're addicted to that because it's something that's bothering you that if you don't smoke, you're going to think about it. A lot of people say, I smoke, so I don't think about such and such. Right. That's a problem. Figure out why you don't want to think about such and such. I will hear somebody say that, and I'll be like, that's not why I smoke weed, but that also sounds like not a very good reason for smoking <laughs> weed. Like, if you have trauma on the horizon, you definitely want to deal with that yeah. shit before it builds up into something that consumes you. Yeah, a lot of people are like that. And you got to give everybody their own time to develop. And, girl, you know, we all on our own journeys. Yeah. No, that's definitely true. I mean, there's just so many people in, in hip hop or people I talk to on here and stuff who have been through so much trauma, but the, the language that they've been born with doesn't really allow them to process like seeing 10 of your friends die through high school. Like it doesn't really, they, they don't process it the same way. Whereas you'll hear somebody else, like sometimes I was listening to a fucking interview. God, I can't remember who it was, but it was some like white woman in her thirties. And she was talking about her friend dying when she was 16. And the way she was talking about it was actually probably the appropriate response that mm -hmm. you should have to your friend dying when you're 16. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize listening to her that I'm so numb to that because I know so many people that die in their, when they're in their teens or in yeah. their early twenties that it's kind of become normalized to me and a lot of people I interview it's 10 times worse like yeah. AD was saying that the other day I'm like bro you know how many people I've seen die from this he's like I'm from Compton he's <laughs> like by the time I graduated high school I had like a dozen friends I knew who had been shot and killed I knew more yeah like way more than that by the time I was fucking 18 right it was one point in my life where every week I was going to a funeral and my mom and my friends was like you need to focus on your music and stay your ass out of there. I remember I snuck to a funeral. Mm. It was like a girl I went to middle school with. And she was like, my auntie, basically my auntie's neighbor, like the little girl that grew up next to my auntie, that was her best friend. And then we all ended up going to middle school together. And she got killed in like a drive-by with her cousin. Wow. So it was like a double funeral. I'm on the news. I didn't even know I was on the news. I'm giving a speech about, you know, how we need to, you know, support each other. And we ain't making it. So we need to focus on whatever it is we want to do and better ourselves. Because we ain't surviving. Mind you, we like 15. I get home, the shit's on the news. My mama said, didn't I tell you not to go to the funeral? I was like, fuck, I was not supposed to be there. But right. I had this fucking prolific ass speech. They put the shit on the news. Wow. I was hella mad. A lot of kids would be terrified if they were told that they had to speak at a funeral. They didn't even tell me to. They was like, anybody want to speak? And I just spoke. I'm like, yo, look around. Like, you see, like, all y'all, we went to school together. Like, we ain't surviving. Like, that's a problem. Right. That's all it was. But how does your brain process that? Like, what needs to change in order for less people to get killed at these young ages? Or do you even think that there's something that realistically could be done to combat this? For me, I was more strategic about how I was moving because my arm, I'll show you my arm. So this Nene, Janae's world, she died very similar to her. She was in a car with somebody else, and she died like that. So that was one thing to me, even to this day. I don't give a fuck if you're a multi-billionaire rapper, right? If I know you got something going on, I'm not getting in your fucking car. Because if I know your car, the people who, don't, who probably don't like you so much probably know your car. Mm. I dated a, I had a boyfriend. He had a fucking 745 on 26-inch rooms. I did not want to get in his car. Because mm. I learned early on, like, people die this way. It's just being in the car with the wrong people. Right. So I started assessing life and, like, going to places in different manners. Like, if I'm not supposed to be here because certain things keep happening there, don't go there. Like, mm. don't put yourself in certain situations so you could survive. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... I very much like grew up not that scared of dying. Like I feel like it took a while for that to <laughs> sort of set in in my head that like, no, you need to like avoid dangerous situations. Like all these rappers dudes are always like, oh, I can't believe you came to the hood and did this video yeah. or whatever. I'm like, that just doesn't seem like the chance of somebody pulling up and shooting us right now is very it's so high. So fucking high. Right. Well, yeah, maybe. But I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> that you guys are looking out for me, right? Like I just assume that nothing's gonna go wrong. I just have kind of like this overly. Niggas be trying to look hard for y'all. Some people yeah. be trying to look hard for y'all, take y'all to the hood, and it's a lot of shit going on you don't even know about. About. Yeah, it's definitely probably been the case before that they're <laughs> painting a nicer picture yeah, for like, me of how it is. That's why I don't play them type of games. I'm like, nigga, I, when I made it to 20 and I like was, I don't know, like, I'm like, I'm alive. I was like, damn, I could live because I kept seeing so many people die before 20. I didn't even know if I was going to make it to 19. So right. when I made it to 20, I was like, damn, you could live. You mm. can literally survive. So it was like, I had a different perspective on life after that. And that's why I got my second win right. and started taking life more seriously and okay. focusing on music and shit. You were just telling me that you lived in the general Southern California area. I won't go specific. Northern. specifics. Northern. Oh, Southern, now. Southern California. Oh, right now. now where I live, yeah. But when did you decide to get up out of there? And was self-preservation part of that idea that you just felt like if you stayed up there that eventually you'd just get wrapped up in some bad shit? I just feel like artistically, we didn't before Empire was created, it wasn't really any great 
places to go to do music. Mm. It didn't exist. Right. So I feel like for me to have a fighting chance to actually maintain my status as an individual in the music industry, I had to move out of there for sure. Mm. And at the time being, my label was centraled here. So that's why I moved here. Right. Yeah. I could have stayed there, right? Because I got a profitable bag when I signed my deal. But it was like, eh, I don't think I want to stay here. Right. Yeah. I want to change my whole life. And then my brother was dying. So it was like, I'm definitely not going to be here. It just, just felt weird after that. Because it's like, that was like our end all be all. Every day at the end of the day, we're there. So do, it was like, once Do that you happened, agree with the idea that like the Bay Area, I mean, like clearly it's true to a certain extent, but in the Bay Area, like there tends to be a lot of popular artists and they become really popular in that area, but then they have a hard time sort of appealing to a broader fan base. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's changing? Do you feel like you suffer from that at all? I don't feel like I suffer from that at all, right? I'm the only female hip hop artist you besides Nicki Minaj regional. to get a record with Drake, right? Let's mm. be real here. Pop my own shit. So is that, I don't that think that is true. Yeah, very true. So it's like I don't feel like I've Why ever suffered that? strange. suffered from people not appealing to my music. I just feel like I was in a very very bad situation. For years, and yeah. I'm just now. This it hasn't even barely been a year yet that I put out music. Mm. So it's like I feel like people just have to get used to seeing me consistently. Because mm. if you read all my comments, you see people say great things, right? They say like she's the best female rapper. She's this. I feel like she's great. I feel like she should be here. People understand that. It's not like it's not conceptualized. Mm. I just feel like it has to actually develop to the point where it's like the whole world knows. Like y'all can't fuck with her. Right. No, definitely. I mean, one thing that guys consistently say, and I wonder if you're ever cognizant of this, does this cross your mind, is that, like, guys will be like, yo, like, such and such girl is, like, hard-ass rapper. But then, like, they, they just won't really, like, drive around. They'll be like, oh, she's dope, but I can't drive around listening to her. She's talking about popping her pussy and all this shit. Oh, no, niggas riding my shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you that now. Like, if you look at 90% of the videos I post on my story, it's not women. Mm. And I learned that early on. I remember my friend, his name, he a rapper uh, back in the Bay named D&I Mike. Mm -hmm. One of my first big records in the Bay, he was like, your voice different. He's like, I didn't know if you was a girl or a boy, but your voice is hella clean. Mm. He was like, it make niggas not feel weird about listening to you. Right. And then I met with Mariah Carey, because I was kind of insecure when I first came out with Good Night in the Ghetto, right? Because all the reviews and shit, people was like, I love her music, but she sounds like different. Like her voice sounds like a dude or she sounds like this. And Mariah Carey told me, she was like, it's something about your voice that makes people want to listen. Don't change that. Mind you, she didn't know I was battling with this issue. But when she said that, I'm like, bitch, you are one of the greatest vocalists of all time. For you to tell me that my voice is great, I'm not changing it. How did you end up in the same room as her talking about <laughs> such things? YG had a song with her. Oh, okay. And I was like, she don't know this. She probably still didn't know this to this day because I never told her. Mariah Carey was the first video I ever saw in my life to always be my baby. Wow. So from that moment on, I loved her. Still to this day, dearly, I kick somebody's ass over Mariah Carey. Really? She didn't know that. I'm just over there just kicking it. But the whole time, it's like, nigga, you my nigga. But she, didn't, you say, cool. didn't you say you started rapping because you saw Eminem rap and you were like, I could do this? No, it was Bow Wow. Oh, Bow Wow. Bow wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what started it. But my first actual experience that I vividly remember when I was like three, four, I remember her being on that swing with that hair, curly right. hair. Like, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was laying on the carpet. I remember the pink carpet, how my arm had the, you know, you lay on something, the dents in it. I remember how it smelled. Right. That's how much I love music. Like, I remember seeing that video, like, everything about that moment. Wow. And I loved her forever since then. What was her energy like in real life? Was, was she very much what nigga. you expected? She was, I promise you, she made me love music even more because it's like you were everything I thought you should have been when I met you. Really? You know how some people be like, oh, you meet this person, they a bitch, are they that? She was the first thing from that. She was so sweet. That's amazing. Fucking, uh, what? Just because she so doesn't have to be cool. So what? She was, I <laughs> She could do whatever you, the fuck she wants. She was so amazing. That shit made me so happy. Like, wow. she don't know how much she inspired me just from meeting her. That's a beautiful just thing. Just being in her house because I felt like my little apartment was like everything because I just moved from Oakland to this nice apartment. Mm. Then I go over here, it's like, bitch, you're poor. <laughs> yeah. There <laughs> her are backyard many levels. got a backyard. Like, you, you got, it's levels to this. You I'm get like, in the music business <laughs> and you start to realize, like, oh shit, there's, there's levels to this. There's yeah. levels of like, and then you understand <laughs> why Kanye and Drake were beefing over who had the better pool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, and that's how. I felt in her backyard, literally. It was like, bitch, you got a clip on the end of your fucking pool? Yeah. There's some different shit. When I first remember, I remember when that happening and like kind of not understanding, like they're really beefing over that. <laughs> and then when you start to understand, they're like, no, they like live down the street from each other. So whoever has the bigger pool, it's like a pretty obvious nigga. thing. And that nigga too. It's just like, it's like a status quo lifestyle symbol. I wonder how the pool wars are going now because they said that Kanye was building a very, very large pool, potentially bigger than Drake's pool, like in response <laughs> to that whole thing, which is kind of hard to imagine, but.
but I can imagine it. That, that nigga that would go, would go he'd for, go it, for yeah. broke for to, to prove he know he in the dick war. <laughs> How tuned in are you to watching what's going on in hip hop? Like, are you are you very much like paying attention to a lot of the, the? I feel like everybody if they say they don't know what's going on, it's like cap right because it's like we're all on our phones to extent every day. Right. And the things that are the issues you're gonna see the most because everybody's picking it up. So yeah, I'll be knowing what's going on. I feel like I would expect you to have some level of distance from knowing about every little thing going on in hip hop just because you seem like stylistically, musically, et cetera. You seem like you're just very much in your own world and that I do be in my own world. Yeah. That's why I don't be in no shit, but I do know the shit that is going on. Right. <laughs> like I, I see everything. Yeah. Did you watch the too short E40 yeah, battle of the weekend? Yeah, absolutely. I was in there the whole How time. was that? It was like watching my uncles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two drunk uncles having fucking fun at a cookout or something. I haven't even seen it yet, I gotta admit. But did, how did you expect it to go, and how did it go? In, it went in exactly how the fuck I expected it to go with them two niggas. I'm really? Like, yeah, I got hella respect for both of them. Right. Who would you say won? Both. Were you I thinking would never, of it like that? I would never go against one or the other because right. it's like the respect is there. And then I've known short for a certain amount of time. And E40 has always been nothing but kind to me. So I would never want to say something and get took it out of context. I respect the fuck out of that. Oh, yeah. That would be a good headline. You're right. Right. Kamaya says. Da, 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 Kamaya it's like, says too short. Whooped E40's nah, ass. Nah. I feel like they both set the blueprint for how I navigate my music career. Mm. That's dope. Yeah. Because it's like my dad grew up playing E-40 and Too Short, so it's like a level of game I have in me right. from what the fuck they were saying in their music and just the way they hustled their music, right? They kept all their fucking masters, etc. cetera. Mm. I did the same. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. I owned my first project, even though I was on the label. And then now, I'm indie, so now I own everything. So that's very important to you. Yeah, hella important. What? How the fuck... My kids going to eat 10, 15 years from now if I don't own my shit that I put out. I mean, the irony of you being caught up in legal label limbo, which is very great alliteration that I just delivered, but <laughs> that being caught up in that limbo for all those years is that it just feels like you're the kind of like artist that, like the last kind of artist that should have ended up in that I was being situation. loyal, though, to the person I was signed to. That's all it was. It was mm. me just trying to be loyal, like trying to build something into fruition for their brand. Right. That's why I said when I woke up out that slumber, it's like, no, you need to be selfish and stop being selfish for other people right. I was sacrificing myself for the benefit of others and it's like be selfish with your time be selfish with your career but what did he want you to be that you weren't uh, to, uh, capable to hell of if being? I fucking know I still don't know to this day but I, right. I'm not, that's not up for me to decide mm. what was up to me to decide was this is my career I'm only gonna be able to do this once you gonna age out this shit eventually we all do uh -huh. so while the getting is good go get it the fuck when you put all that shit on front street in the Vlad interview yeah. did anybody reach out was there any conversation no, after that? it no. still hasn't been any conversation but I don't expect it to be you know what I'm saying it's just like people are who they are and today mature uh -huh. they're gonna be who they are and I'm not taking it personal you know it's always love for me I want everybody to prosper is that a challenge at all though I feel like there's I probably feel like sometimes I feel like there's gotta have been anger at some point right no it's pain it's mm -hmm. hurt because I feel like I considered you family mm -hmm. and for you not to even look at me in a certain light how I looked at you and I sacrificed so many years and hours of time to mm. develop something for you and not even be, you know, respected enough for a conversation after the fact. Right. You know, it is, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. Would you be receptive to that conversation at this point or is it? I will only speak to other people if they reach out to me because I'm not going out my way because I've done nothing wrong. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything you're missing right now in the COVID thing? I was going to say this like a long ass time ago in this conversation, <laughs> but I was watching a video of a dude going to Ghana for the first time yeah. and like just showing like what it was like being there and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've actually felt for the first time in a long time, wow, it would be so cool to get on a plane and go somewhere. Well, I. It's been a while. I probably shouldn't say this on camera because I probably shouldn't have been there. I'd have been hella places door COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have went to Haiti, all type of shit door COVID. You went to Haiti? Yeah, I went to fucking Haiti. I had time my fucking life. They didn't I was make at you quarantine or anything? No, I was having fun and hella shit. I was at fucking festivals and all type of shit. Fireworks going off, niggas fucking eating fire, just all type of shit. Right. Had, what? But what's your perspective on COVID, though? Or you just you feel like, fuck it, I'm, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to go see my grandma after. <laughs> I don't really care about <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I just feel like, you know, if you got, you got, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't trust the government. So it's like, I'm going to live my life. If I'm meant to die, God just called me to the upper room. Right. I just got to go up there. It's my time in that appointment. So shit. That's like not considered <laughs> like a, a healthier, safe attitude. Like even like people in my family, I've said. I take said, the precautions, you know, I wear right. my mask, sanitize my hands, et cetera. But I'm not going to stop living my life because yeah. this person says you got to sit in the house. 
I'm not going to accomplish nothing in the house. I'm, I'm going to be depressed in I've the house. I've had people be very upset with me for basically saying that same thing. I'm yeah. like, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And they're just like, oh, like you can't. That's the most selfish perspective in the world. Because I guess I, I get it. Like, okay, <laughs> if you are reckless, then you could potentially get other people sick who mm -hmm. are not, their immune system's not as good as yours. They're not as young as you, whatever. But I mean, that, I've been saying that kind of shit my whole life. If I die, I die. It is yeah. what it is. You know, the safety, take the safety precautions. I'll tell anybody that. But don't stop living your life because mm. at, I feel like that's the problem with COVID. And that's why suicide rates are the highest they've ever been. Mm. Because as humans, we all vibrate naturally. Your body has vibrations. That's why when you kick it with somebody, you say you vibing, right? Right. If I can't go kick it with somebody and have that energy, which creates the synergy of us all being together, then it's creating a depression because I'm in the house by myself all day. Right. So I feel like that's why kids, like, I feel so bad for them. Like, I see my little cousins and she just like, I don't want to be on this computer. Or I see my little other boy cousins and my nieces, they don't want to be on a computer because mm. they're supposed to interact with other kids at that age. They're not yeah. supposed to just be sitting in the house on a fucking computer. Because that would have been my advice to any kid or, like, any parents raising kids is, like, don't have the kids sitting on the fucking computer or watching TV all day. They need to be out running around and having being fun. with but other now kids. They yes, yeah. Now they fu they're forced to not be children. Yeah. I feel like the suicide rates are going to be higher than they ever been for whatever. I don't know if it's millennial X, whatever the fuck they are. Mm. I feel like it's going to go up because right now when they do become of age, they're going to have all these issues because they have social issues now. Right. Because they're going to, who's to say when they're going to be able to go back outside? Yeah. So that's going to fuck with them because they're not growing in certain aspects. Because I feel like school is supposed to teach you like, Social skills, right? Yeah. It teaches you how to interact with certain people from different demographics that you exactly. wouldn't interact with normally on your day-to-day -day life. That's the thing I didn't understand about school that I wish I understood at that time is that this is one of the only times in your life in which you and every other kid your age in your town or your city or whatever mm -hmm. are all going to be put together. And a lot of these people, you're just not going to run into in your mm -hmm. life after this. Like mm -hmm. the fucking rich girls on the other side of town. Exactly. You're just not going to be in the same exactly. environment as them after school. And that's kind of the beauty of it. And I mean, part of it is like, that's the horrible part of it is that, you know, you could get bullied by some kid that has nothing like to do dope. with you. They teach you social skills and to so many different facets because it's people, if I didn't go to school, right, because I went to school in Oakland and I went to school in Hayward. Mm. And Hayward obviously is more multicultural, right? So I wouldn't know how to interact with the nerd Asian in the corner right. if I didn't go to, you know, that's working for fucking Google. Mm. If I didn't go to school with a motherfucker that was similar to you, you feel me? Right. I can interact with anybody because I went to this certain school and I'm I'm going to naturally fuck with everybody. Even though I'm like come from the hood, I'm urban. Mm. I'm very personable. So it's like anybody from the nerds to the squares to the players. Any, I was bouncing the fuck around fucking with everybody. And it taught me to respect everybody's different lifestyle, whether you're poor, rich, whatever. We all fucking human. Mm. If you're a good person, that's all that fucking matters. At the core, are you a good person? Do you have morals, values, respect love integrity that type of shit that's all i give a fuck about even in the entertainment industry mm. what is your actual moral code right where's your integrity what are you willing to die and live for right. that's what's gonna tell me if you're a good motherfucker or if i need to stay away from you I give a fuck how many records you say on but that who, shit don't who, mean who nothing. do you actually spend your time with in your in your personal life like who, family, who do you people but, that but actually, your family lives around you at this no, time i can or? fly to them though 30 oh, okay. 45 minute flight i right. got cousins in arizona i got cousins in dallas and some of my family's still in the base so it's like if i want to have that time that went on time i go fuck with my real people and my best friends they move down here so it's like i could drive to their house they live in the IEI. i just drive to their house if i I want to you know because you know at the end of the day when you're an artist right you uproot yourself and move away from everybody but the people that are still near and dear to me they're here so i can you know kick it with them right but other than that like i just be to the neck i'd be in the house drinking tea on some player shit reading <laughs> reading you know? yeah i read what do you read a lot and whatever fuck catches my attention really yeah favorite genres or types of books anything in particular it don't really matter because i'm i might read a life book today science fiction tomorrow or some fucking ghetto ass urban fiction it's just Depends on what the fuck I'm into at the point. Wow. If a kid catches my attention, I'm going to read it. You walking around town, though, do you attract a lot of attention? You got a lot of people who know who you are and, like, is Nah, because when thing? I'm not in Rapper Road, I'm in the bonnet and a hood on, mm. mask on. You don't fucking see me. I'm just in and out so quick. It's blur. Like, I don't care about this type of stuff. That's like you take your your superhero costume off. If yeah, you, like, you know. I won't even, like, I'm telling you right now, when I go home, ain't going to be no makeup on. I'm going to have my fucking bra off, through, sh off, all that <laughs> shit. Big t-shirt, panties. That's it. Right. You in a relationship? No, not right now, currently. Really? Yeah. Is, are you okay with that? How is it being single? I feel like I need to be single. I was in a relationship for a while, and I don't feel like it ended on bad terms. I just feel like that person needs to, to grow and learn themselves and mature in certain ways. And my people feel like I need to focus more on this. Really? You know? 
what's your team like? There's two ladies with you right now, but is that the majority of like who's nah, helping you make these decisions? That's my makeup artist. That's my A and R slash part time management. Sometimes I got another manager named Jessica. Brandon used to be management. Now he's more my partner because obviously I'm indie, so we started the label side. Right. And then I got you know my friends. I feel like that's what keep you grounded. You always got to keep people around you from your day-to-day -day life before this mm. so you don't become a dickhead right because right. who's going to tell you you're being a fucking bitch who's going to tell you you're being a hater who's going to tell you you shouldn't have did that mm. if you don't got somebody so i keep certain people around me that i've known my whole life so that i can stay humble right but and some modest. of the, but some of those people that you tried to elevate with you that it, it didn't work out right like some I feel of like some you people outgrow people yeah and i respect everybody when i see them it's no different you wouldn't even know that we don't talk every day but mm. My lifestyle's different, right? I have to be around people who are more in the likeliness of the business I'm doing. I don't want to hang with somebody who's shooting dice all day. Right. What do we have in common? Yeah, what do you have in common after a while? That's how I don't get when people be like, I'm keeping it real, going back to the hood. What do you have in common with them at this point in life? <laughs> you're just trying to prove you're from there. My niggas from my hood, I don't talk to them every day. But if I'm in Oakland, I'm going to be like, bitch, tell us when you're here so we can protect you. That's what they're supposed to do. But do you see value in pulling up to like, the hood or like. Yeah, I go to my hood all the time. She'll tell you, I'll be in the hood, I'll be in the house. Kicking it, cooking, barbecuing, house party. I just don't fucking flex that type of shit because mm. I'm really from there. Like, you know, right. I feel like when people are overly trying to prove something, it's like, are you trying to prove it to us or yourself? <laughs> mm. But do you feel like the label, is that part of what they wanted Labels from you? Labels don't make nobody do shit. But people. did they want you to be mega gangster? No. No, okay. Of that person, probably. I don't fucking, <laughs> like I said, I don't know. Because right. it's like, I have nothing to prove, right? I've been to jail in the airport for not taking off my bond. It don't get more gangster than that. Wow. I went to jail because my gun accidentally went off in the theater in my building. Yeah. It don't get no more gangster. There's obviously facets to me that are gangster. Right. But I don't glorify those aspects because I'm not out here trying to be Miss Gangster Supreme. Mm. I'm just coming from a situation where I'm, you know, I had to defend myself in urban communities, mm. obviously, and I'm going to always take those safety precautions. But I'm not out here, like, disrespecting a motherfucker at any given time, trying to whip some ass just to prove that I, I can do that. Like, it's, who's on that for real when you grow? Let me ask you a simple Who question. A I'm a fucking business. I'm a brand. Should more women carry guns? Yes. Have I you... think any woman should want to protect herself. Hmm. It's no, Adam, if we weren't here right now and you caught me in the alley and you wanted to knock my ass out and rape me, how could I physically protect myself? Right. That's the whole reason why I think it's an important conversation to have. Like we yeah. we seem to understand that men it's like a very rational, reasonable decision for guys, at least in Los Angeles, to carry a gun. Uh you don't see any sort of like normalization of women doing the same thing, even though that's probably the number one thing that a woman could do to protect her, to level the dynamic. Yeah. Of what the fuck is some pepper? Like if a motherfucker really wants you some pepper, that's what they tell girls, right? Oh, get you some pepper spray. Get a taser. Right. It's motherfuckers out here right now. high off some shit. I can shoot you with a bullet. That probably still wants to stop you from getting the pussy right. if you want to rape me. So it's like people got to understand that with women. Like you have to protect yourself. And I come from a background. Like I said, I have all brothers. I have male cousins. They want me to protect myself. I right. drive around by myself all day, one hundreds of thousand dollars worth of jewelry on, just listen to my music with the fucking top off. Uh. Do you think I don't have a gun on me? You crazy as fucking hell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because I mean, like I was watching this documentary about like this uh, this serial killer who was like basically just killing tons of women all over England in the in the eighties, and it was like this awful thing where the whole area was just What's terrified. The name of it? it was on Netflix. The Ripper. the Ripper. What's the one with the guy who was doing it online? And he killed the kids. Don't fuck with the cats. Oh, oh my. yes. That, that was shit, crazy. Yes. That nigga was tripping. That was a big part of COVID for everybody. <laughs> yeah, nigga, that <laughs> shit. Like that type of... And I used to watch shit like that growing up because I used to watch Lifetime. Right. So I watched... You ever seen my... I know my first name is Steven. Oh, yeah. It was based on a true story from a nigga from up there where I'm from. He got kidnapped. So I was mm. always scared of getting kidnapped. Right. So that's why I'm always on my toes. I used to watch that shit. And then my ex used to always watch like forensic files and shit because this motherfucker be like, I want to know how people think. Yeah. Like, because it's people who don't think as normal as you do. Right. And I, just knowing that it's a motherfucker out there that acts and functions like me and you that's probably going tonight to go kill it. Like, he could be not saying he is. He could be a killer by the end of tonight going we, to kill we've, somebody. We've talked about it many times. We have our doubts. No. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's kind of okay. When I'm watching that documentary, at one point, they basically, like, the police chief was telling cities and towns, like, women should not be out after dark. That, that was their solution to That's there dumb. being one killer on the That's loose. Dumb. And I'm just like, 
how is it not even and this is England they don't really have guns like that or whatever mm-hmm. but how like how is it not part of the conversation that even if it was just pepper spray or a blade or something like that it's like you need to like reach a point where a woman can level the playing field right that's just like telling a motherfucker wear a mask you won't get COVID when it's people getting COVID with masks right hmm. that's the equivalent to that right. it's nothing you can do to stop a fucking killer from killing you even if you in your house right. this motherfucker want to climb through the window guess what he's climbing through your fucking window right. so it's like what's the relevancy to that that's why I never understood that they never teach us safety precautions to protect ourselves uh-huh. they teach us how to just maintain being cute because right. that's some cute shit pepper spray is some let's be real that's some cute shit right get your little pink shit with a little flashlight on it like i don't want that shit yeah i want some shit that if a motherfucker try to kill me and take me from my family i'm gonna end you and you're not going home to yours that's what i want right i don't want to fucking just be old that would you still punch me in the eye or fucked up my face forever because you still got to me like no you need to be stopped in your fucking tracks right I was talking to uh, Rio, the young OG, and them, and they told me that that women like like they're terrified of women these days because so many women have guns and they're like really not scared to use them these days. So apparently, no. what I'm suggesting is already happening. To some no, extent. I definitely feel like I. It's, it's sad to say this, but I feel like men are way more feminine and emotional than women now, right? Mm. We are more emasculated than they are sometimes to a degree. So it's like if you have like I just literally, I promise you to God, you can Google it right now. Read a story last night. A man in Sacramento killed his wife. He shot her. Like, mm. just on some emo shit. Why did you shoot your wife with her kids in the house? That's some emotional ass shit. You not knowing how to channel your energy in the right manner. Like, that's emotions. I can't even begin to imagine what the fuck is going on in a guy's brain. 26, 27, you just shot this girl. Like, right. And it's like, that's that emotional shit. Like, men are hella emotional. for no, And they're not, they're not rational. Right. They're hella irrational. Because that's irrational thinking. What? That's yes. you instinctively doing what first comes to your mind because you're so emotional and erect at that point. I'm so erect. I just gotta, I gotta do something. And it's like, nigga, you could have did anything. You could have threw this bitch across the room. Well, how, are you, how are your coping mechanisms in life so bad that like something happens to you that you don't like, and so your solution is to like kill the woman? Emotions, man. This <laughs> food, this scary, food is man. pumping with hormones and all type of shit. Yeah. Women are way more gangster than men these days. Mm. Like women will tell a man, "I'll fuck you now." Right, which is nice. Women can say fuck you to a man, but I mean the guy's got to handle it. Like you got to be able to deal with it like an adult. It's a different type of time we live in. There. One of my uh, uh, employees, this dude Jason, he had a really good question here. He said, "Ask her her thoughts on Kamala Harris being from Oakland, but also having a long history of locking up young black men." Man, I don't fuck with blood at all because really? of that. Yeah, mm. I feel like people wanted me to root for her because she's from the wherever the fuck she said she's from. I don't even know the fuck she's from. Right. But from my understanding and people that I know back home, she didn't locked up a whole lot of niggas for a whole lot of shit they did do right so until we rectify that how can i promote you in an office because now you got way more power to fuck up more niggas that that look like us right i don't fuck with that but i think that because that was her doing the job of a prosecutor now we're going to get to see her be a vice president where when that's, you're a vice that's president, the diabolicalness of it exactly bitch you could press any type of button now mm. But she's not going to ever really be held accountable because she's not going to be forced to be making those kind of decisions. And let's be real, like at the time that she was making those decisions was when being tough on crime or whatever was like more Man, frown, doing shit smiled upon, bad. you know? And it's Like I said, it's always a duality, good and bad. If you're doing something like that, that's because that was in you. You wanted to do that. I wouldn't do that to nobody. Right. Like, I know right from wrong. You knew what you was doing. It's a weird, com- conflicted one because you see like a lot of like people hyping it up. Like, oh, imagine how all the young black girls feel all over America. I don't now- feel shit for. I'm, listen, <laughs> that, and that's the thing that I hate when women they feel like every uh, not even just women America they try to preach this narrative that just because somebody's black they're right when you're black. Nigga, no. I'm, I'm, I'm probably the first person to vocalize this. Right. I don't feel like that's important, and they should not perpetuate that because it's like it's that's the stigma in our community that when you go against that fucking statement, that you're wrong. You're not wrong for having your own opinion, especially when it's validated with facts. Uh-huh. It is hard facts saying this person is not good for you or your people. Read into that. Don't go with the narrative because somebody looks like you right. that that's right. No, hell no. But it's could- like me saying my nigga he killed six people and you come up to me like hey he killed my mama i'm like oh well that's my nigga he a killer right the fuck that nigga wrong he took your mom from you like but could you respect somebody who looks like you and comes from where you're from but thinks that donald trump was a good president or wanted to support him yes because that's their prerogative mm. who am i to tell you how to think that's your life right that's your feelings if you can validate to me why you feel like that I have to respect your opinion. Mm. I have to disrespect you. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I dislike Trump so much that it is kind of hard for me to wrap my head around how somebody <laughs> could support him. But at the same time, I really hate I the idea. I think he's remarkably humorous. 
uh, humorous. He's remarkably humorous. Well, that there, yeah, I could definitely get behind that. But I, I just hate <laughs> the idea that like people are supposed to, you know, like that you should be able to look at somebody's skin color and know exactly how they feel politically. That's such like a sinister that, idea. That's you know? the, but that's how they pry on your emotions to get the vote, right? Mm. That's how they get you, especially my people specifically. I feel like we don't never. The average person is not even reading the bills that's being passed. Mm. They're not really paying attention to what they're voting for. They're just voting for the person that they feel like is for this. Yeah. And that's the smoke in the mirrors that they get you with. Like, We're going to do this for your people. Yeah. 80 or 90 percent of people are mm. probably basing their vote more on who they feel looks like them slash would be somebody that they can imagine themselves going to the bar. Or with. what somebody is painting to you that they're going to do for you. That's how they dangle shit in front of us. Mm. For your community, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to pass this bill. Do this for your rights. And then people believe that shit. And then five years, four years later, when the presidency up and they didn't do that, they didn't realize that you passed that bill to let them in office. And you're not fighting for the next term for the person to, you know, perpetuate what this person said they was going to do in the first place. Like, right. that's the part. That's why I don't get into politics. I told you I'm just not on that type of time because it's like... I read a lot, so it's like I feel like, bro, this is some bullshit. All this shit constitutionally is wrong. But do you do you feel like that's kind of the 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 boxes that the label or whatever like sort of wanted you to be in? Like you were either going to be a super gangster or a super activist. Like those are the two slots. I'm a that lot they like Tupac. I feel like niggas know you can't put me in no type of box. I'm mm -hmm. too much of a free thinker. Right. And I'm just going to be me today. I might be Erica Badu tomorrow. You might very much so get a little left eye. Mm. So it's just like, <laughs> depends on what time you catch me. You know, you're going to get what you're going to get. And I, I'm okay with that. For sure. Yeah. Do you feel free as a bird musically at this point? Just Hell like yeah. being able to, you put out three projects this year after not driving a project for all those years. Like, th does it feel like you're a musician again? Like you were a musician for all these years, but yeah. you were playing shows and shit. You weren't putting out new projects online or whatever. I feel like it's a gift and a curse because I feel like Good Night and Ghetto was so good and it, it sat for so long that it seasoned that a lot of people want it again because it aged well. Mm. they like, ah, oh, I need another good night. I'm like, no, bitch, you only want that because you had it for four years and nothing mm. else. Right. So it's like, that's the part that kind of like irritates me sometimes. They be like, give me another good night. I'm like, no, mm. you had it for four years. You know how fucking annoying it was to perform that shit over and over and over and You get over. sick of performing the same old songs? Oh my God. <laughs> I had the same 30 minute set because I only mm. had fucking, what, 10, 13 songs out. So it's like, fuck, and what else made, can I do? You made hundreds of songs behind the scenes, but you can't really perform them, them when they don't know them. Yeah. yeah, it's like, I couldn't put the shit out. Like I was sitting on hella songs. It's still songs that I'm sitting on that you'll probably never hear mm. that I just could not put out. So, but are these these new albums that have been put out over the past year? Are those like the best songs from all these years, or is that like no, what you were shit. doing? It's it's new shit. Literally new shit. Like I'm recording some shit right now. Like I record so quick mm. that shit don't make no fucking sense. I'll make a whole album tonight, Adam. I heard you say that. You said you made like ten songs in a night. No yeah, problem. Yeah, that's how I got the deal. <laughs> right. I was like, who the fuck is this bitch? Where did she come from? <laughs> Do they try to have you writing for people and shit too? Yeah, I don't like that shit though. You're not into it. I'm not giving you my sauce. Really? No, let me get my shit off first. But isn't the bag pretty good? That's what people say, but I'm not. I told you, I'm not like, driven by that type of stuff. You aren't. Yeah. Give a fuck about that shit. Money gonna come to me regardless. I got a good heart. You say a lot of stuff like that, though, that just, like, I believe in my talent enough that I could say fuck you on this or this. Yeah. I respect that. Yeah, no, a lot of people don't stand on it. That's why I liked the 90s era, because niggas stood on what they fucking integrity and morals was. They didn't waver because a nigga is telling you, if you don't do this, then it's never going to happen. Mm. Bitch, you ain't God. That's how I look at it. Like, the only person who can stop me from getting any fucking thing that I want to obtain is the Lord himself. Mm. It may take a little longer, but guess what? What's for me is still for me. Definitely. That's why I don't rush nothing. Because if you rush it and you get it, you're probably going to lose it quicker. Right. While you were kind of locked up in the label shit, though, basically, like, the whole genre of women rapping kind of blew up yeah, to evolved. a level that it hadn't really been for yeah. years and years. How do you feel about that? And was that did that make it kind of hard to watch all these girls getting put on and getting to have their moments and stuff? And then meanwhile, you're just sort of stuck. Fuck yeah. I always tell people, it felt like I was in a glass house watching everybody outside playing. Mm. It's like I could see y'all everything, but I can't touch, feel, smell, nothing. Like, right. you feel me? It's like, fuck, I want to come outside and play. Remember that episode of SpongeBob when the niggas was watching him and Patrick outside playing Squidward? That's how I fucking felt the whole time. I'm like, these bitches going, ah! 
up and I support it. Yeah. I respect it. But it's just like, damn, I want to do me. Because it's like I'm never doing something from a perspective where I'm hating on anyone. Because mm -hmm. I admire a lot of female artists. Because just to be a woman in hip hop and wake up and do you is hard enough. Right. It's unrealistic standards set on women. Uh -huh. Hella unrealistic standards set on women that is not on men. Right. So if you can be an alpha woman in this business and make multi millions of dollars in a big ass brand, I respect that. Right. It feels like people are very quick. I mean, people are very quick to turn on male rappers as well, I feel like. But with women rappers in particular, it feels like the audience is kind of like looking for any little thing. Like, I felt you know like I saw that with I'm Meg, with Doja Cat, with I'm everybody. Tell you why. I literally, last week I had an interview with, I don't even know what the fuck it was in the magazine. And I told them, I'm like, y'all put these unrealistic standards on women, right? Mm -hmm. Well, y'all try to force us to fucking kumbaya hold hands and turn in, in fucking circles. Y'all not telling all the men that they got to form fucking brother circles. They all Why hate the each fuck other. do women gotta have fucking sister circles? <laughs> right. We all not gonna like each other. And that's just realistic. You feel mm. me? And then you get the people who gonna pretend like they like people because they feel like that's what they have to do. Right. I don't never want to be that type of person because I feel like if I don't fucking like you, I don't fucking like you. Uh -huh. And that's why I told them because it's like y'all can't keep forcing that on women. That's right. why they want to break it because everyone's trying to prove the theory wrong. Like, right. oh, y'all all really don't get along. That's what it is. They're trying to prove that theory wrong. Yeah. Because they forced this narrative. Like, that's so many females now. I just love the unity and the sisterhood. It's not realistic. <laughs> A lot of people don't like each other, but they're not going to come out and be like, I don't fuck with her. Right. Because if they say they don't fuck with her, guess what? Now she's a hater. Now she's this. Now she's fucking up the unity amongst right. everybody. And they just be on some bullshit, But there's man. an extent to which people can watch men beef in rap and just sit back and enjoy it. They like, encourage that. And not really lose respect for either person. But then that. women beefing with each other, it's like, why do women have to tear each other down? It, why do women I, have to fucking, But that's why I'm you telling know? you why they're saying that they're tearing them down because they felt yeah. like you're fucking up the unity, the sisterhood. Mm. Don't tear your sister down. We supposed to be kumbaya and a who girl. And man, that shit is fake. That shit is fake. My favorite thing is how people are like, oh, like, you know, everybody needs to be more like the rappers in Atlanta who support support each other and stuff it's like they be that, beefing too. that's such a surface level of so, understanding of what's going on in atlanta and yeah. i can actually point out for you a bunch of atlanta rappers you who have shot at each exactly. other people who have died people who clearly like what about this huge rapper from atlanta and this huge rapper from atlanta that mm -hmm. you've never seen on a song together i wonder why no, it, you know? it, they're never gonna debunk all these theories right because mm. that's not their job to debunk it their job is to build you up and break you the fuck down yeah. So you have to walk a fine line because mm. everybody wants to break you down, particularly women. Yeah. Spe specifically black women. They ain't fucking trying to break down Taylor Swift. Mm. They're going to break down motherfucking uh, Megan Thee Stallion before they break down Taylor Swift right. real quick. You get what I'm saying? So it's like you got to walk that fine line in this entertainment business. That's why I don't let people in my life a lot because it's like once I let you in, you know how I think, you know how I move, mm -hmm. you know anything about me, you know how to break me. <laughs> Especially the media Because they can't wait <laughs> Is there any of the new female artists That you've been particularly impressed by? I fuck with everybody Like literally I ain't never had no issue with nobody You know what I'm saying? We all meet We cool I'm not gonna push that kumbaya shit Like we best friends mm. We go eat sushi all the time Like ain't none of that <laughs> shit But as far as me meeting everybody I feel like I fuck with uh, Flo Mealy right now I feel like she mm. came out of nowhere And she kind of like She's got good energy yeah. So I fuck with that Like and I feel like She's doing something different So it's like I, I, I be paying attention I keep my eye on certain shit To a degree But I don't Overly step my boundaries Flo Millie is one artist I heard who I was kind of like you know, she sort of got a little bit of that like young Chief Keef type energy where she was just like real aggressive and yeah. shit, which is not something that I feel like a lot of times people are ready to accept from a female yeah. artist. But yeah. she like managed to like pull it off in a way where I was like, yo, I actually fuck with this. And I can imagine like girls fucking with this in a way that is very different, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I fuck with Sweetie because I feel like Sweetie from day one, she's always been an advocate of me and I fuck with that. Besides Cardi, Sweetie the only other person who ever acknowledged me. Really? I feel like a lot of people try to act like I don't exist to make me go away. You can't act like I don't exist and think it's going to make me go away. It's going to make me go harder. No, they should tap in for sure. People know exactly who the fuck I'm at. I just feel like to a degree people feel like if I act like she's not there, she won't blow. Right. <laughs> Bitch, please. Like, you know? Yeah. So it's like... That's the type of thing you deal with this entertainment industry, you know? Like a motherfucker know you there. They know you dope. They, they see it. They'll actually be a fan of you. How do you feel about the moral panic relating to WAP? A lot of people seem to think that this is like maybe the end of the, the end of hip hop or the world, maybe. You had Uncle Lou talking about, oh, me so horny. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> See that bitch with the Daisy on Duke song, Hoochie Mama, all type of raunchy shit. Too Short is from Oakland. I lit up, literally grew up hearing a man call bitches bitches all day. Mm. 
I call bitches bitches all day because a nigga that I listen to. You think I give a fuck about WAP being a fucking misogynistic record, as they call it? Right. Give a fuck? That's her pussy, her choice. But you <laughs> you, you don't like over-sexualizing your stuff, or you don't seem like you're I even... Make, a, if you actually listen to my music, you'll hear that I do talk about my pussy, but not all day. Not a ton, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I noticed that. I'm like, like the one bar that I noticed that you like talking about riding dick or some shit, I'm like, whoo, like, wow. Oh, no, she didn't. No. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man, like, I didn't expect that after like this whole album not really being on that tip. Yeah. yeah. No, Which yeah. is good, though. They got to make that stand out uh, yeah. means more yeah, no nah, man that's how i feel like when women man that, if that's what how they this is an industry where you can become a multi-millionaire quicker than any other fucking industry mm. so if that's how you're gonna feed your family pop that pussy to the floor and scrub it on the ground i don't give a fuck <laughs> scrub it that's a mental that's image your right pussy, there your choice you feel me i feel like the people niggas just be hating because they can't do that that's what it really yeah. be you can't rap about your funky ass dick and make no money, but she can rap about her pussy and get rich as fuck. That's what Tiger's the only one. Tiger's the only one who could talk about fucking on the track and everybody just goes Lil for Lil Wayne it. and Tiger, the only two I know who talked about their dicks and made a hell of a lot of fucking money from it. Very, very true. <laughs> Oh man! All right, so you're you have plans for new projects coming out in the near future, or what's honestly? What's I'm just, I probably shouldn't even say this, but I'm planning on dropping in January again. Really? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm independent. Mm. I can wake up and drop a whole album tomorrow, any day. I feel like it. You know why not take advantage of that? I don't feel like I feel like people nowadays put so much pressure on themselves musically mm. when we're living in the time where a motherfucker could pick up their phone and stream your music. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know how many times I told my manager, like, now I'm getting to the point where I'm about to start doing it. Rappers, we record so many records that never come out and don't release them. Mm. That is fucking dumb. Just because you don't <laughs> think it's a hit, put that shit out. Why? Because it's a stream and it makes you fucking money. Right. Like, I feel like, why aren't we there yet? Like, I get what Master P was doing now. I'm like, nigga, he was dropping 30 albums a month because he fucking could. Mm. It was no standard on it. He made the most fucking money he could make. He's still rich as fuck because it was unorthodox. I want to be unorthodox. I don't want to be in a fucking box. Right. But there's got to be people on your team that are pushing you to try to make, like, one big cohesive project. All my projects are cohesive, so they don't give a fuck. Really? They know anything I do is going to be fucking sonically. You turn on my album, you can literally still do the bottom to the bottom to the top because I studied the game. I know what an album's supposed to sound like. I sit with the producers. I conducively make sure that shit's flowing. Like right. people don't do that. They don't structure shit. Shit don't be mixed. Motherfuckers sound like they're recording in the bathroom over there, mm. underneath the sink right there. Like I'm not doing that. I'm actually sitting there flushing out the shit and making sure it sounds good. And I'm putting out high quality music rapidly. That's what I'm on. Fuck that. You're right. gonna get the, you gonna catch these vibes. You build up that back catalog. I, I talk to I'm a lot of rappers. I'm now. selling. Yeah. I, I know what I'm doing. I, I'm setting myself up to be a fucking eight, nine figure woman. Right. People may not get it now, but then they're gonna come back fucking five years from now and look at this no jumper interview and be like, that bitch did say she was gonna do that because they don't understand what I'm doing. That's and it's hella thinking. unorthodox from all women. So it's like I was thinking like that's uh, I very much appreciate that because I just feel like there's there's gonna be people looking at this interview in ten years and being like, damn, like she kinda told us what she was planning there. I promise you, it's gonna be people looking back like she said she was gonna do that because it's too easy not to. Yeah. Why the fuck would I not if I can? Right. That's fucking dumb. This is the music business. Put out the fucking music. Yeah. And nowadays, it's all about getting, like, one song to really get traction and blow up. So why not drop 100 before you get the one so the 100 can stream later, and now you're fucking multi-millionaire off the 100 you did before the one? But could you never sign to a label again? I will sign to a label again absolutely with my own terms. Right. <laughs> Only with my own terms. I'm not opposed to it. I just got tied into a machine that wasn't the one that worked for me. Right. Does that mean all machines are bad? No, that was just the wrong washing machine to get washed in and shit. Right. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm not opposed to that, but I just know me personally, I want my catalog to precede me before I do get in that type of situation. Uh-huh. Because once you get the hit record, if you got, like I said, if you got 100 songs, the people are going to consume those last projects. Mm. The baby probably had 10 fucking projects before we knew who he was. Right. And you sit there and wonder why he's fucking getting 17 cars for his birthday. He's one artist I went back. <laughs> I listened to all the shit before he got popping. And I was like, wow, like you can just so hear the that cohesiveness. He, he just kept getting better and better. The like, it's the same yeah. shit over and over to the cohesiveness, the structure, till it got bigger and better. Even mm -hmm. Lil Baby, you go back, Lil Baby was putting yes. out six fucking projects a year mm -hmm. before he got to where he is. And then people ask why he's the number one rapper in the world. This motherfucker put out fucking 150 songs before you fucking probably ever heard him. Right. And you wonder why he's that rich. These and are then, two people I can say that. Meanwhile, he was getting so much better as the time went by. Like, That's just always best. making music over and over and over is the only way that you're going to get better at making music. You mm -hmm. know? I, and I feel like you should always kind of like not listen to other people so you keep your own sound. 
Mm-hmm. I feel like when you start listening to other people's shit, you start dibbling into that shit. Now you sound like this nigga. Like I always tell people, like if you want to make the best music, listen to oldies or something else to get a feeling. Mm. Don't listen to another rapper because then you're gonna become that rapper. That's my least favorite thing in the world is when a rapper has a bar that is like I'm blank like blank, and it's literally like the first blank <laughs> is a popping song right now, and then the <laughs> the other blank is the artist who performed that song. And I'm like, could you do anything to make it more obvious that you have no fucking reference base that you're pulling from like yeah. i would way rather you like use some weird reference from the 90s or some movie that i never seen or some shit that at least sounds like you got something interesting going on in your head it's very very interesting especially now because it's like a motherfucker will take such and such a style run with it and blow up and not even care mm. you know back in the days you would get your ass whipped for that oh, <laughs> hip-hop yeah. it's like it's no real rules to that like i'm just gonna dye my hair fucking fuchsia orange mm. and yours is this color and i'm gonna make your song and just like y'all niggas don't care it's just different one day we're gonna have a conversation about ad lib theft there's been a whole <laughs> lot of that big ad lib theft it's just that's that's the era we live in there mm. it's, it's a def, definitely a different type of time that's why i feel like the most unique thing you i tell any artist is to work on your voice because mm. a motherfucker could never steal that from you yeah they can never steal your voice if your voice is the instrument how the fuck can they duplicate it yeah no for sure um okay kamaya appreciate you coming through for west side real. we in the house real ass conversation man you and ad are covering the same cloth he always saying west side to me west side in the house west side don't give us enough love we out here show the thugs some love the west is out here there it is game the fuck up Kamaya, I appreciate it. Appreciate you too. Thank you so much. This was a great conversation. Kamaya, No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, subscribe, nojumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate y'all. Happy holidays. Whoop, whoop.